Hello friends, welcome to War Wiki. Timeless Thursdays is our new series, where we discuss any such event in historical wars that was relatively less known, but had a major impact in the war. In today's edition of Timeless Thursday we bring you a little known operation of the World War II, this operation was astounding success, it was one of the best successful strategy ever to have been employed in any war, and is still taught in many military schools. Today we briefly discuss about Operation Bodyguard and Operation Fortitude and focus in depth about particularly Operation Quicksilver, where General Patton and his Phantom Army deceived the German High Command into believing an imminent attack on Pas de Calais in North France. We take you to that time of history when Allied forces were about to invade German-occupied France. In the spring of 1944, Allied forces from the West had set their eyes on Northern France as a point of attack, however once they settled on Northern France, it became their goal to lead the German High Command, especially Hitler, to believe they would do the unexpected and land somewhere else. British intelligence agencies worked overtime for what was the biggest deception campaign ever, it was called Operation Bodyguard. Using double agents, false intel, hoax armies, and fake wireless traffic, Allied forces designed Operation Bodyguard to make the Germans believe that invasion might come in Greece, on the Adriatic coast of Yugoslavia, in the south of France, on the Biscay Bay coast of France, through the Low Countries, or via Norway and Denmark. This ruse was executed to such a perfection, that Germans took the threat to all these locations seriously and maintained major garrison out there. To achieve this deception, several integrated operations were to be carried out, most prominent among these was Operation Fortitude. Operation Fortitude in turn had two parts, Fortitude North, which was designed to mislead the Germans into expecting an invasion of Norway, and Fortitude South, wherein Germans were to be deceived into believing that a major Allied assault will happen in northern French region of Pas de Calais, by a fictional army under one of the most recognized and feared American general, General George Patton. The key element of Fortitude South was Operation Quicksilver, it created a belief in German mind that Allied force consisted of two groups, the 21st Army Group under General Montgomery which was the genuine Normandy invasion force, and the 1st US Army Group or FUSAG, under General Patton. FUSAG was a fictitious force, initially the force which was to take part in Operation Overload, the genuine assault of Normandy under General Bernard Montgomery was showcased as the FUSAG force. This ruse convinced the German spying Luftwaffe, millions of men and vehicles on the ground meant that Allies mean business. But gradually in the dark of night, every day the genuine force gradually moved away where it was supposed to be and the fictitious Fusac gradually comprised of a phantom force. This phantom force was stationed in Dover, directly across the English Channel from the site of Pas de Calais which had the narrowest part of the English Channel. To further attract the Axis commander's attention, General Dwight Eisenhower roped in General Patton as commander of the phantom force, and increased the formation's apparent size to be larger than the British-led 21st Army Group under Bernard Montgomery. General Patton was temporarily out of service after two separate instances of slapping fatigued soldiers in Sicily, he was one of the most renowned general of Allied forces and even Hitler respected him. On Patton's appointment to Fusag, Hitler and the Axis commanders were convinced that Fusag will lead the assault on France, Hitler personally asked General Rommel, his most decorated and battle-proven general, to fortify the area of coastline near Pas de Calais. The Phantom Army had several actors and carpenters from Europe and America, there were mess halls, hospitals, ammo depots, and even sewage treatment farms. Washed up laundries were hung on clotheslines, an artificial dock and fuel depots were constructed, and parking zones for trucks, tanks, jeeps, and ambulances were laid out. Most of the vehicles were made out of wood and fabrics, series of inflated rubber Sherman tanks were placed one behind another, rubber tanks and trucks don't leave tank tread marks in the earth, so soldiers supporting Quicksilver were equipped with rolling tools to make tread and tire marks for the Luftwaffe to see. General Patton frequently went on rounds and was seen taking photographs to achieve complete deception. Double agents, particularly one named Juan Pugil Garcia, codenamed Garbo, played a very important role in Phantom Army deception. He operated out of Lisbon and was the primary lead that convinced Germans of an eminent attack on Pas de Calais. British intelligence fed a lot of questionable information to neutral diplomats for the same purpose, hoping that this information will somehow reach German ears. Fighter planes from Royal Air Force kept constant patrols over the artificial dock, in order to keep enemy at bay and Germans fully convinced of this force. Operation Quicksilver achieved full success, the Germans kept a major chunk of their armored forces in Pas de Calais, which otherwise would have been deployed in Normandy. 
Hitler was so convinced about Buzak as primary assault force, that even seven weeks after the Normandy landing all German forces in this region of Potikale were still kept intact. Even after Patton arrived at Normandy as the head of the US Third Army. The Germans thought that Buzak formations were being cannibalized by Eisenhower's forces to replace losses in Normandy. The presence of Buzak kept German forces at the Potikale out of the Normandy battle. This gave Allied forces a major advantage and they could break the German lines in Normandy, had Germans called Allied forces bluff the massive infantry and armored division protecting Potikale would most likely have been deployed in Normandy, which probably would have jeopardized Operation Overload, and no one knows if Normandy landing would have been possible or not. This is why we chose this lesser known operation as our topic this week, stay tuned to Timeless Thursdays, next week we will bring you yet another timeless tale, a genius strategy that had never been seen in any tank battle before. Do like and subscribe our channel. Have a wonderful day and support WarWiki.